All right, chapter three, okay, is about vectors. Uh, when we talk about vectors, we already are familiar with it, and we don't even know it, okay? Especially in one-dimensional vector, if we were to take a look at, like, I don't know, back in the grammar school days or elementary school days, when we had to use, like, let's say, oh, you know, here's a number line right here, and here's the origin, which is, like, my house, right? My house in the middle of our street, right? So here, this is my house. And if I want to go to Sally's house, Sally's house is like two blocks away from me, right? But just saying two blocks away doesn't really give me the location of Sally's house. It's like, oh, yeah, Sally's house is two blocks away. Well, two blocks which way? You know, do I go up two blocks north, two blocks south, right? Two blocks east? Oh, yeah, two blocks east. Now I know exact location of Sally's house. So I'm going to need two things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to know how far, right, numerical value, and I have to know the direction, right? So two things are necessary to find the exact location of Sally's house, all right? So that is known as the position vector, and position vector has two things. One is the magnitude, and second is the direction, okay? Now, the magnitude pretty much tells us how much, right, the numerical value, right? So, numerical value... Okay, numerical value. It's like size, you know, or strength, okay, of the vector. Okay. Direction has to be a physical direction. Okay. That means it, it could be like, you know, four cardinal points, like north, south, right, east, and west, right, never eat soggy waffles, right, or it could be like up, right, down, left, right, okay, positive or negative x-axis would be a physical direction, right, positive or negative y-axis, Positive, negative, z-axis. Right? You could give direction with the angle theta. And later on, you'll see not only theta, but theta and phi, a combination of those two. Okay? So, um, direction can be given in many different forms. All right? Now, direction gives us Right? Spatial value. Right? Where um, magnitude gives a numerical value. Okay? So, if it's not a vector, then it has to be a scalar. Now, scalar is anything that is not a vector, and... It only has magnitude, right? No direction whatsoever. No direction home. Just like the Rolling Stone, right? So vectors are important because it's really useful when we do physics, okay? Uh, there are certain vectors that you should be familiar with, okay? Now, vectors are represented with this little tiny half arrow on top of a variable. Like, for example, a vector is represented with a with that little tiny half arrow on top. That means it's a vector. In your textbook, right, vector is represented with a bold-face letter, okay, bold-face letter. It's really hard to write bold-faced letter when you're taking notes, 
right? Because it looks like you're like correcting a mistake here. And and it can be very confusing, right? So they use this little tiny arrow to represent vectors so you don't make a you know any kind of confusion. Scalar, on the other hand, is just regular face letter and that's it. Okay. And this little symbol here is called a hat. And I'm not making this up. This is actual mathematical term that we use in the United States, right? In Europe, they don't call this hat, they call it a roof, okay? And unit vector, as you know from your math analysis, you have unit circle. Unit circle is basically a circle with radius of one, right? Well, unit vector is a vector with magnitude of one, okay? So this is magnitude. of one, okay. okay, and it points along an axis. So if it's x hat, like this is red, like x hat, x hat means it is a vector that is one unit of magnitude along the x-axis direction. That's what that means. Okay? So one unit in magnitude in the x-direction. So here are some uh, vectors that you should be familiar with. You should be familiar with position vector. Okay? Position vector is like defined with like, you know, X, right, like Y, Z. Now when we get into um, more than one dimension, you're going to have R as your position vector, okay, like radial direction, radial distance from the origin, all right. You should be familiar with velocity vector. And don't get confused with velocity, with speed, because velocity is a vector where speed is a scalar quantity, okay? So velocity vector, okay, is dx dt, right? It's the first derivative of the position function. And then you should know acceleration, okay? Uh, acceleration again is a and that is dv over dt and later on we're gonna know like force okay momentum uh, impulse etc etc now change in vector is also a vector so if I have change in position that's also a vector which is known as displacement vector Change in velocity vector is delta V, right? Change in acceleration is delta A, and so on. So when you do any kind of mathematical operation of adding and subtracting vectors, you will get another vector out of it, okay? When you multiply vector by a scalar quantity, you will get another vector out of it. So we will talk about that more in detail, all right? If it's not any of these, most likely the chances are it's going to be a scalar, okay? Now, vectors can be represented graphically using arrows, okay? So, for example, if I were to have a vector, then I can represent that vector with an arrow, okay, like so. And this arrow can represent three things in a vector. First... The length of an arrow represents the magnitude. So if it has a great magnitude, it has a longer length, right? So longer the length, greater the magnitude. So here, 
This arrow head represents the tip of a vector. They call it the tip. Or sometimes they call it the head of a vector. Okay. And the, the other part of the head, obviously, is the tail. And that's where the vector starts. Okay. So this is the tail of the vector. So make sure you can identify the different parts of the vector. The length is the magnitude. That the tip represents the direction of the vector. Okay, so if I have a vector that's going along the x-axis, I can represent that with three meters x hat in the positive direction. Right, so. Here, my vector A, this is red, positive 3 meters x hat. But what that means is it is 3 meters in the positive x direction. Or this can be read as 3 times, right, 3 times the um, 1 meter x hat. So, if you were to think about it this way, it looks like I have three unit vectors, right? So, this is 1x hat, right? 1x hat, and 1x hat. So, if I have three times the unit vector of 1x hats, I get the exact same thing. But it's going in the positive x direction. B vector also states that it's 4 meters in the negative x directions, or, or negative 4 meters x hat. Again, it starts here at the origin, and then it moves 4 meters in the negative x direction. Now, these vectors don't have to always start from the origin. They can actually, you know, start from positive 2 and go to positive 5, as long as it is 3 meters length, and it's going in the positive x direction, it's still the same a vector. Matter of fact, it doesn't even have to be on the axis. It could be like up here, where it is as long as it's 3 meters long, and it's going in the positive x direction, it is still a vector. It's a lot more convenient if you were to draw the vector starting from the origin all the time. Just like if you were to measure time with the stopwatch, and you always measure it at 0, 0.000 seconds. Ben, you have a question? Yeah, so does that mean like the unit vector, they, they say like it has to be along an axis, it just has to be like in that direction? That's Correct. Like it doesn't have to be directly on it? It doesn't necessarily have to be directly on the axis. It could be anywhere parallel to the axis. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's very important. That's very important. So it could be anywhere as long as it's pointing along the same direction as the x-axis, parallel to the x-axis, it is still can be considered as x hat. All right. Any other questions? Good. All right. So positions have distance, which is the magnitude, from the origin, and they have direction from the origin. All right. So this position vector tells you exact location of a unique location from the origin is what that tells you. All right. All right. Yeah, I guess I think I, I put like two different um, um, PDF of this notes. I hope you printed the right one. The one you're supposed to print out is the one with the uh, Vector notes plus the homework packet, not just the vector one. Sorry about the confusion. If I made you waste a lot of paper, sorry. All right, let's take a look at page two. Now, these vectors can be added, okay? So you can add two vectors together, such as vector A plus vector B is equal to vector C. Now, vector C is basically the result of adding these two vectors. 
So we can say vector C is called a resultant vector. Now resultant, right, is pretty much the product. Well, not I, wouldn't, I don't want to use the word product. It is uh, the result of, that's even kind of weird too, using the same. Yeah, it's basically what you get out of doing the operation. When you add two vectors, you get another vector. And that vector that you get by adding those two vectors is called the resultant vector, okay? okay? So you can add vectors graphically and or you can add vectors algebraically. Let's take a look at adding vectors graphically first. So here again, uh, we have two vectors, and I'm going to represent my vector A with my aquamarine blue, all right? And it is 3 meters positive x direction, okay, or positive 3 meters x hat. So starting from the origin, I go 3 meters, and obviously I won't be able to draw 3 meters on this page, so I represent like each centimeter as 1 meter and draw 3 centimeters long. In the positive x direction. And I'm going to represent my b vector with a passionate purple color. And it is negative 4 meters x hat, so starting from the origin, okay, and it's going to go into negative 4 meters in the negative x direction. So to add this graphically, you need to use tip to tail method. Okay, tip-to-tail method. The tip-to-tail method means, first, I place the vector that I'm adding, the first vector, put that on starting from the origin, so draw a vector starting at the origin here, right? So let's call that zero. And if I draw a vector a from the origin, it is three units in the positive x direction and make sure you draw the line and draw the arrow head if you don't draw the arrow head it's not a vector okay you have to draw the arrow head in there or else it's, it's not a vector then you would place your second vector which is vector b that you are adding right the tail of this vector to the tip of my vector A, okay? So, if I were to just pluck this thing out and then put the tail on top of my head of A, right? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. So, I'll pluck this out and then place the tail of B onto the head of A. So, Here's the tail of vector B, and I place it on the head of A. Now notice I am right on top of this, so I can't even see my purple, so I'll raise it up slightly so you can see it better. So here's my vector B. Like so. Then, my resultant vector will start from the origin where the A started. So from the tail of A to the tip of my last vector that I'm adding, which is tip of my B. So that is my resultant vector C. The resultant vector C, then it is obviously one meter, right, in the negative x direction. So negative one meter x hat will be my result in vector C. All right. Now that's adding vectors graphically. Well, you can also add vectors algebraically. Okay. Now let's say you have many, 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 many vectors. You know, and you don't want to draw all of them out, you know, it's kind of tedious to draw them out when using rulers, right? 
So you can do it graphically and or algebraically if it's more convenient that way. But when you're doing this, you have to make sure your unit vectors are same. So if my a vector is equal to this x hat and my b vector is also equal to x hat, then I can add them algebraically. Like if you're adding just a regular number. But if these are not the same, you cannot just add these numbers algebraically. You have to use it some other different ways. All right. So if I have my a vector as being positive 150 meters x hat, and my b vector is negative 25 meters x hat, I can add these algebraically and say, oh, my c vector happens to be then positive 125 meters x hat. Well, that was easy, right? Because if you think about it, my a vector was going this way, right? My b vector was going like this way, right? So my resultant vector is from here to here, that way. And that makes sense, right? Similarly, when I do this, oh my god, get the calculator out, right? So when I at A vector, it's 573.5 meters Y hat. And my B vector is negative 43.25 meters Y hat. Again, my Y hat, Y hat, they match up. So now I can add them up algebraically and say, oh, this is only 530.25 meters for Y hat. So this vector is along the Y axis. All right. Well, if you could add vectors, I'm sure you can subtract vectors, right? So if you could add vectors, you can definitely subtract vectors. So here, when I subtract vectors in one dimension, a vector minus B vector is equal to C vector. That's very, very similar to, same thing as saying, A vector plus negative B vector. Okay? But how do I negative a B vector? Right? So let's say I have, let's say I have a B vector, I don't know, like so. Here's my B vector. It's three centimeters long. Now, it's not exactly on the axis, but really shouldn't matter. Here's my B vector. If I want to make this B vector into negative B vector, what I need to do is I need to draw same length, same magnitude, which is three centimeters long. But notice they're parallel. Right? See how they're parallel? And my arrow just flips. This is my negative B vector. Okay? It's like multiplying it by negative 1. Well, what if I want to, like, you know, make it even, like, longer? I drew this thing two times long as my B vector, but it is flipped. Now this would be just negative two B vector. Pretty easy, right? right. So, Let's take a look at an example here. Here I have a, a vector is 4x hat. I'm going to use 1 centimeter for 1 unit below. I mean, this 4 does not always have to be in meters. It could be 4 meters per second or 4 meters per second squared. So you could have many different units. But for now, 
we'll use one centimeter is equal to one unit of whatever measurement it is. So first thing is I, I would let's draw this thing out four meters or four centimeters along the positive x direction from the origin. So my a vector is four centimeters long along the positive x direction. So here's my a vector. Now, my b vector looks like it's going in this direction, right? That's my b vector. So negative b vector will be going in this direction of 7, right? So since I'm doing a minus b, right, that is exactly same as that's exactly same as a plus, right, plus negative b vector. So since I'm adding the negative b, I'm going 7 meters or 7 centimeters in the positive x direction. So here, I will add negative b vector onto my a so here is my negative b vector okay so the resultant is from the tail of my first vector which is a and then to the head of my last vector that I'm adding, which is here is my resultant vector C. So algebraically speaking, if I do a is equal to four meters x or four centimeters x hat and b is equal to neg minus the negative seven meters centimeters x hat, then when I add these up algebraically, since they're both in the x hat direction, this looks like positive eleven centimeters, right? X hat. So if I measure my c, it should be eleven. All right? Let's take a look. Wow, look at that. 11 right it goes to 11 right? right everybody goes to 10 you know and if you want to go a little higher where do you go right they can't go anywhere but my amplifier goes to 11 you know oh come on spinal tap don't yeah nick nikita you have a question Yeah, when, when the unit's given to you, then you would definitely add the uh, units. For now, they didn't give us the unit, but they just want us to represent that, you know, mystery unit in one centimeter. So I would not particularly write centimeters in this case. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this could have been representing like a velocity where it could have been like four meters per second, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't know exact unit it is. So we'll just leave it alone for now. But I will not take any points off if you wrote down centimeters, like, okay. you know, because we did in centimeters, so I would not, you know, take any points off. But if this were given to you as like, I don't know, four newtons or four meters per second or four meters per second squared, then this would have that same unit down here. It follows that. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, then. Uh, let me give you guys about three to four minutes, see if you can humor me. And do this page, all right? Just do this page just to see and check our understanding, and we'll go over it, all right? So right now it's 1016, so I'll give you till like 1020, all right? 1020. So get to work. Get your rulers out. Make sure you use a ruler. Um, if you like to use different color pens, it's awesome because it actually helps you more not than me.
All right, so let's take a look at this. Again, I'm going to represent A vector with my aquamarine blue and my B vector with my passionate purple and my vector C, which is the resultant, going to be represented with my environmentally friendly green. So here, if I were to represent my A vector starting at the origin, four units represented by four centimeters in the positive x direction. So, boom. Here is my A vector right here. So here's my A vector. And my B vector happens to be seven units in the negative x direction. So starting from uh, tip of my A, I will go seven units in the negative x direction. So here is my B vector. So my resultant vector starts from the origin and it will go to the tip of my last vector, which is tip of my B, and that is my resultant vector C. So my res resultant vector C happens to be negative three units, you know, in, the, in our case we use centimeters to represent it, but three units x hat. Okay? All right, let's take a look at the second one. The second one is five units in the positive x direction. Right, so here I will draw five units going in the positive x direction. And here's my a vector. Okay. And then minus b, so I'm going to add negative 8. Right, so minus b is equal to negative 8x hat. So I'm going to add negative 8 to my a vector, which is that way, right? So here is my negative b vector. So my resultant vector comes out to that, and that is my resultant, and that is negative 3, again, x hat, okay? Now, let's take a look at the last one. So, a vector is negative 4.5, right? So, here is my a vector. And my B vector happens to be positive 6, so, but I'm subtracting it, so my negative B would be negative 6. So here's my negative B vector. Okay. So my resultant will be from the origin, which is the tail of my A, to the tip of my B, and that will be my resultant vector C, which is negative 10.5 x hat. All right, I hope that was okay for everybody. All right. Now let's move on to two-dimensional vectors, okay? Now, before we go in there, like if I were to give you, right, like these vectors in one dimension, it's kind of easy to see how to add them up. But what if I give you something like this, where my A vector happens to be like positive 3x hat, and my B vector happens to be, let's say, positive 4 y hat. Well, 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 we can't add this and say oh, 7 x y hat. No, no, we cannot do that. But if we were to actually add this graphically, now we want to do this sloppy way, so because I don't have room for it. So here's my a vector, and I'm going to add 
my b vector, which happens to be four units like this, right? I put the tail of my B onto tip of my A, so it's going to look like one of these joints. So here's my B vector. Right? And my resultant vector, C, will start from the tail of A to the tip of my B. So this is my resultant C. Right? So... This here has to be a right angle because X and Y are always going to be perpendicular to one another. Does that make sense? So this is a right triangle. Okay? So you can say now my C vector is equal to, right, literally A vector plus B vector. And we use graphical method to get my C. Okay? Well, what if we go the other way? What if I just have a C vector first? What if I just have a C vector? Like this. Right? What if I just have a C vector? I can represent that C vector as additions of x vector and the y vector, right? And that's what we'll take a look at next. So here, if I were to take a look at what we just talked about, let's say that this vector here happens to be my a vector. This vector here can be representing my a vector in the x direction. So it's my ax vector. And this vector here is representing my y side of my a vector, so a y vector. So my a vector can be represented as ax vector plus ay vector. Okay? Now ax happens to be three units, okay? Let's just call it three centimeters for now. Three centimeters x hat. And my ay vector happens to be four centimeters y hat. So my a vector can be represented as, right, three x hat plus four y hat. I factored out the unit of centimeters out. So you can write it like that. So my a vector, which is originally this, can be broken up into two x and y components. Okay? Components. This form of the vector writing is called a component form. Or it's also known as the Cartesian form. All right. So um, so whenever it's written like this. Understand it as component form or the Cartesian form. Now, if I were to look at this, the magnitude of my A vector when I add these two is not going to be 7. 
because they are adding in two different dimensions. But if I take a look at it, this looks like a right triangle because my X and Y components are perpendicular to one another. Therefore, the magnitude of A vector, this means it's a magnitude, okay? That same as just writing it like that, A, okay? So mag. The magnitude of the A vector can be written as this or this. It's really nothing more than just the hypotenuse of my right triangle with the size of AX and AY. So the magnitude of A is really nothing more than just Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of AX squared plus magnitude of AY squared square rooted will be my magnitude of A. Therefore, the magnitude of A is equal to right, square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 5. So this length here gives me the magnitude of my A vector to be 5 centimeters. However, I'm missing something that's supposed to make vector a vector. I am missing a direction. So this is only the magnitude of A. But the direction of A must be given. Well, if I say 5 centimeters, you have no idea where that location is. Because it could be 5 centimeters this way, this way, this way, this way. Or 5 centimeters can be anywhere along this from the origin. But if I tell you exactly 5 centimeters, this much of an angle from the positive x-axis, then I only have one unique position for that. So if I can find this angle so that I could show you the bearing of which way you should go 5 centimeters, there's only going to be one unique position. So to find that angle, theta, we have to use trig, so 10 inverse of the opposite, which is AY, over adjacent, which is AX. So 10 inverse of 4 over 3, and you should get something close to 53 degrees if your calculator is in degree mode. So now I have two things. I have the magnitude of a, and I have now the direction of A. Therefore, my A vector can be written as the magnitude of A comma theta. Yeah, Ben, you have a question? Yeah, do you want us to always be writing in degrees, like don't use radians? Yes, in physics, write it in degrees. Because, um, yeah, just write it in degrees. In math classes, I know you're gonna, you guys are gonna be using radians, so make sure you know how to like switch your modes once you get into math class. So here, my a vector can be written as five centimeters, comma. Theta is equal to fifty-three degrees. This is known as the magnitude. and direction form 
or otherwise, it is simply known as the polar film. So my A vector can be represented two ways. One way will be the polar form. Another way would be the Cartesian form. Okay. Now, there will be some times later on you're going to see um, your unit vectors, like x hat, it will be switched to i hat, okay? And then your y will be j hat, and z will be k hat. Okay, and the reasoning is, is, is the convenience, basically, uh, because when you do like a higher order math and multidimensional math, you have so many x, y, z variables within the equation, and if you have like I, you know, x, y, z hat, sometimes you forget this little hat, then it becomes a variable and it just screws up your whole calculation. So in order to avoid that confusion, they use i, j, k notation for the unit vectors. That's all it is. So get used to both ways. All right. All right. Um, you don't have to write this one down next, but I just want to show you um, for just quick review of trig so that people are on the same page with The convention of how we're going to use angles, thetas, and betas, and so on in the xy plane. Okay, so if we were to have xy plane here like this, so here's your x axis, here's your y axis, okay, this is your negative x, negative y, okay. If I have my vector, okay. In a first quadrant, let's say, here's my vector in a first quadrant, let's say vector A, okay? And this vector A is in first quadrant. This first quadrant will have positive x and positive y. We all know that, right? So, this angle theta right here, this is the angle theta. I'm going to call that theta A, right? This theta A will be measured from the positive x-axis, which is actually the zero degrees. This is the zero degrees. And this is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 270, and back to 360, right? They're same things. So the A, which is theta A, will be somewhere between 0 degrees to 90 degrees. Okay? Then, if I were to have... A vector, let's say, in a second quadrant. Let's call that vector B. Okay. This angle right here. Is my theta B. It always should be measured from the positive x-axis counterclockwise to the vector and my vector B since is in second quadrant it should be negative x and positive y and my theta B 
okay, is going to be from 90 to 180 degrees. This angle here is my beta, which is the reference angle, beta B. And this beta B is actually a negative angle, okay? Okay? So when I want direction, make sure you give me theta, not beta, okay? Unless the question says, give me beta. Okay. All right. One more. Let's say I have another vector in the third quadrant in vector C. Let's call that vector C. Okay. This vector C is in third quadrant, which means it will have negative X and negative Y. And this is the angle theta. This is the theta C. Okay. And my theta C is from, you know, usually from all the way around this way. I guess it's going to be from 182. 270 okay and this is my beta C okay this is the reference angle this reference angle okay is going to be positive Because it is measuring counterclockwise. And last but not least, if we have another vector here, let's call that vector D. Right? Now the vector D is in fourth quadrant. Right? That means I have positive x, negative y. And this is the angle for my vector D, and that's my theta D. And my theta D would be from 270 to 360, okay? And this is my beta And my beta D will be negative angle. Okay. So if you are in a first quadrant, right? If you're in first quadrant, your theta A is your like beta A. They're the same things. Okay. So beta A and theta A are the same things. If you are in a second quadrant, okay, your your beta, so theta B would be 180 minus your absolute value of beta B. So if you calculate this angle right here, right, and then whatever that angle you get, if you do it correctly, you should get a negative angle. But if you subtract 180 minus the absolute value of that negative angle, you should get your theta B. And that should be between 90 and 180. Similarly, for theta C, theta C, it'd be 180 plus your beta C. So calculate your beta C right here and you add 180 to it and you'll get your angle theta C. 
and here um, your theta d will be 360 minus d all right so this is all review from math analysis um, I'm not, you should know all this already okay so I just want to get that convention correct because this is somewhat confusing depending on where your theta is and your beta is and and doc like never like uh, fixed this thing where I fixed it on my other notes but we're using docs notes so my honors classes I already made that fixed but AP we're gonna have to correct them on the way as we go through this all right so now let's take a look at page seven now this is again this is just a review all right I have this posted up on Scrooge if you want so if you take a look at page seven okay any 2d vectors can be broken down into two components of the vectors we just talked about that okay so if I were to take a look at um, this vector here this vector a happens to be right, 7 centimeters comma theta is equal to now this is really not a theta right here this 52 degrees is actually your beta this is a, your reference angle of beta of 52 degrees this is your theta right here okay so the theta for my a vector, so maybe I should write down a little subscript here just to represent that theta a, right? That theta is 128 degrees. So this a vector that's given to us can be represented as 7 centimeters comma theta of 128 degrees. This is the polar form, right? Now they want us to find the components of that A vector, right? So we can say, well, the magnitude of my AX, right, is equal to, right, the magnitude of my A times cosine of my theta a so the magnitude of my ax is equal to 7 times cosine of 128 now if you use 52 you got to be careful because your x component will come out to be positive but since you are in second quadrant it should be negative, all right? But if you use the proper angle of theta A to be 128, your sign will automatically come out to be negative. Therefore, my AX will come out to negative, all right? 4.3 X set, all right? So here, negative 4.3 x hat is my ax so ay can also be calculated using a sine of theta a right so ay is 7 times sine of 128 and you should get a positive value of 5.5 y hat. So a y should be 5.5 y hat. Oh, maybe I should not have put the absolute value signs here. Sorry. Because this is the actual vector, not a magnitude. Because I do have a negative x hat here. All right. Similarly here, a y, a y. So here, 
Now I can rewrite my a vector in a Cartesian form as negative 4.3 x hat plus 5.5 y hat centimeters. So this is the Cartesian form. Okay. Of my A vector. All right. Uh, in the top left, the 4.3x. Eh, you should, you should put the units down. You, you should. You should. I mean, that is the correct way. All right, now let's go the other way, where I'm given a Cartesian form, right? So here, my A vector is equal to right negative 5.5 x hat minus 2.5 y hat centimeters right now they want us to use that information and find the polar form of my a, ve a vector so instead of this being theta let's call that beta right here that's my beta So this is your theta right here. This is your theta A. Okay. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. This is your beta right here. This is not your theta. This is your theta right here. Okay. So I'm going to consider this reference angle beta is what we have to calculate with this information. Okay. So first, let's calculate the magnitude of A. The magnitude of A is really nothing more than square root of AX squared plus AY squared. So that's pretty easy. So the magnitude of A is equal to square root of 5.5 uh, squared plus 2.5 squared. Now I know somebody's going to say, Mr. Kim, isn't this supposed to be negative 5.5 and negative 2.5? Yes, but if you square it, you're going to get positive, you know? So it doesn't really matter, I guess, in this case, right? And if you do your math correctly, your magnitude of A comes out, I think, like something like 6.04 centimeters. So your magnitude of your A should be 6.04 centimeters. No i hats or j hats, no x hats or y hats for this. This is just a magnitude. Now, in order to calculate your theta, we have to calculate the beta first. So this beta is equal to 10 inverse of, right? Opposite, which is negative 2.5 over adjacent, which is negative 5.5. So if you calculate this beta here, your beta comes out to 24.4 degrees. But your theta, since it is in third quadrant, it is 180 plus your beta, right? So your theta for your vector A is equal to 180 degrees plus 24.4 degrees. So it should be it should be 204.4 degrees. So now you have both items you need.
for your polar form. So theta A is 204.4 degrees. So now you can write your vector A in the polar form as okay, um, 6.04 centimeters comma Theta A is equal to 204.4 degrees. All right. Voila. Ben, you still have a question? Yeah, sorry for asking so many questions. It's okay. No, no, no. Nope. No, don't so, be sorry. You know how you changed the theta in the picture to the beta? Yeah. Then, then you find theta, yeah. But you. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll let you know during the test. Yeah, if they want you to just find theta and it's labeled as theta, then just find theta. Okay. Like, like as beta. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, yeah. So yeah, sometimes that could be confusing, but this is the proper way of doing it. Okay. Any other questions? All right. All right, then. Um, next two pages will be your homework. So page eight and page nine are your homework. We will meet I guess Friday, right? All right, we will meet Friday. So, um, I would always draw these out, you know? So if you were to, uh, I'll help you start this so you guys can like sort of have an idea where to begin. So first thing is I would always draw this thing out so I could visualize it. So get yourself a nice ruler and, and, and draw this axis, right? And then if you were to, like, notice how I use this thing. So if I do this, notice, like, this is, like, straight up and down. And when I put this line right here, it's, it becomes a perpendicular line. So this should be, like, nice 90 degrees, right? And then it says two points in a plane have polar coordinates of this and this. So what I need to do is I need to draw this thing out where I make... Here is my zero degrees, right? And I am going counterclockwise, right, to measure my uh, angle, right? So if I want to go counterclockwise 30 degrees, and this is my first vector right here, so I make my mark at 30 degrees, like so. Then I draw 3.5 centimeters along that direction, all right? So I will draw three point five centimeters along that direction. All right. So this is my first vector. I'll call that vector A, I guess. Okay. So this is my vector A. This angle here is thirty degrees. Okay, my second vector, which is vector B, which is vector B, I'm going to call that B vector, and that is 120 degrees. So if I were to use this, right, starting from zero as my positive x direction, maybe I should label that, so here's my x, right, and measuring counterclockwise 120 degrees, and 120 degrees is right around here, All right? So I mark that spot. Maybe I should be moving over a little bit more because parallax is really throwing me off. Then I draw 3.8 meters, okay? 3.8 meters in that direction. Maybe I should switch this. Yeah, let me 
let's see, see, this gets really nuts, huh? 3.8 meters along that direction. Like so, right? And this is your V vector. Okay. Look at the mess I did. Ugh. That's not going to come off. All right. So this angle right here is your theta B. And that is 120 degrees. Okay. Hopefully that will help you set things up correctly and you should be able to find and answer the rest of the questions. All right. So I'll stop the recording here and I'll let you